Welcome to uh, another uh, video. Um, this is not uh, going to be a typical repair video. What this is going to be is um, an explanation on how to find your way around uh, switch mode power supplies that you would find in an LCD um, TV. Um, it, it's difficult enough for people that uh, don't know anything about electronics just to follow blindly. Um, just changing capacitors uh, there's a lot more to it than that often it's very hard to video um, the uh, fault finding uh, process that you would have on um, um, finding out down the component level on a power supply but what I've done here is I've just done a generic type um, power supply um, which m would be in most um, power supply PCBs um, if not some some of this stuff might be missing there's various different ways of doing it but I have to pick some generic form to be able to explain it um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the um, the uh, mains input here uh, which would be uh, 220 volt AC in Europe and 120 volts uh, AC in um, the USA now we've also on a power supply you normally see a hot and a cold side the hot side is the side that's connected to your mains your household mains electricity coming into the house and then the cold side is normally isolated with these transformers and up to couplers you know you see there's a line drawn down there and I think this side of that line is on the cold side which really means it's not physically connected to the mains input on the hot side and a typical power supply would show that up as uh, let me see can I get this in to the shot you would see a line drawn down the board all the way around you can see it here uh, there's your mains input that's your hot side and anything this side here on this side of that line that white line is drawn on the PCB is on the hot side touch these heat sinks here and put your hand on ground uh, if you if you do a thing like that you're going to get a shock off it so don't touch that with your fingers and um, um, if at all <laughs> just don't touch it also you, you uh, have to point out that um, the voltages that you work on in TVs are high voltages and can be dangerous and can uh, injure or kill you. Um, you got 220 volts AC um, RMS. I'll point out what that's RMS figures here. It's actually uh, if you go to the peak that it's about 385. You can do the calculations yourself. Um, and um, being 120, that'd be half of uh, uh, 385. Okay. First thing you'll, you'll encounter on a um, uh, power supply is a fuse. There's always a fuse somewhere uh, on power supplies. And let's see, can we find it on the board I just got? Now, I didn't draw this uh, block diagram from this PCB. This is one I made up and I just randomly took a power supply out. And as you see, we got um, a PCB or a fuse here on the PCB. And you see it's uh, it's like a ceramic type the glass ones if you get one there put a glass one there and replace that they tend to explode and the glass flies everywhere so it can be pretty dangerous to go to your eyes so you should replace it with that type of uh, fuse ceramic type next thing you would come across then is a, a filter network of either capacitors um, inductors and um, both or just one and we okay uh, we just draw in a doctor and doctor going across it a filter we call it a filter because that's its purpose you would get something like that inside now that could be inside a metal steel can or it could be the, the inductors could be mounted separately i've seen uh, filters in a steel can and they would have bought these two of these inductors and um capacitors they might have capacitors inside it like so as well going across them as well like that inside 
and I'm going to just show you that, that on the um, power supply if I can find it. Here's your coils, filters, and you'd see capacitors here going across it as well, um, network of capacitors. Uh, I don't have a schematic of this uh, power supply. Um, I don't know if there's one available, but there, there, could, there could be, but I uh, haven't checked. Uh, for the purpose of this video, we don't need it. But uh, you see our network of filters and inductors and capacitors. I've only once seen them uh, go faulty on me. Uh, I've seen them, the, the actual inductors melting. Um, I don't know why, maybe at some stage uh, they got a high, uh, heavy load on them or something short, I don't know. The next thing you encounter uh, when you're going into the power supply is a bridge rectifier. Now, a bridge rectifier can be, um, um, it, it consists of four diodes uh, connected together to form a bridge uh, rectifier. But you also get uh, a bridge rectifier inside uh, a, like a, uh, an IC. You won't see the di individual diodes. Um, if, you, if it's the one uh, um, out the individual diodes, you would see four diodes mounted together, configured together. They can go short circuit and will blow this fuse. Um, but when they do go short circuit, you will have, you will if you come along here and put your meter across these two points here with your meter, you will you will read a short uh, on the, uh, the two lines. Uh, you might you have to do both polarities change it because you must remember the, the way bridge rectifier works. Uh, you can have it blown on one side and not the other. So you 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 put your positive lead there and your negative lead there and then reverse them, and uh, you shouldn't get a beep. And uh, what we're going to do now is look on the board and do that and find our bridge rectifier. Okay, well right there's our um, our filter, so we know it's further in from that, it's, and we can't see any lines on this, so we're just going to turn it over and have a look, and uh, we can see we got a line coming out of there and it comes over here, and the other one comes over there, and then we got another two pins, four pins all together. So that's a uh, Possibly a, a, a bridge rectifier mounted inside a package itself. And this would be your AC input, and you normally see AC wrote on the uh, this, the uh, side of the package. And you'll also see the plus and minus on side of the package. So let's just turn it over and see, can we see it? On this particular one, it's mounted in here. There's a screw holding it to the uh, to the heat sink here, they cool it down. And um, there's thermal paste behind it, white thermal paste behind it. So to get good contact with this, you you, you have to use thermal paste. Um, it can be bought uh, in the likes of Radionics or any good electronics stores. Just don't mount them straight on. And if you see one, and if you mount it on a heat sink with a, an insulator, like that there, it's got an insulator, make sure you put the insulator on as well. You see an insulator washer. That's common enough on uh, chopper transistors, chopper FETs, that they will use an insulator there because there'll be a, that there is a chassis ground or a yeah, hot side ground, as you would call it. And um, then your middle pin then would be at um, high voltage um, because it'd be switching and be a very high voltage um, because you have to. Um, back EMF coming out of the uh, chopper transformer which creates high voltage spikes I should say high voltage spikes okay now the test if you're if what happened is if you're getting um, the fuse blown at plug-in just straight away at plug-in and you want to check out the first things you normally do is you might you might see some. You can have a look around first. Have a look around. You see something blowing. Obviously, you you go elsewhere. But if you can't see it, you got to start somewhere. So normally on the two pins, the AC inputs, I do a check. That's what you hear if you um, have a short. Go this way, and then this way, and both of these are reading open. 
there's no voltage drop that's across the fuse check the fuse as well I'm just going across the fuse because if you had an open fuse you're obviously not going to get a short here If you did get a short there, uh, you're going to have to isolate now where the short is. I've had these capacitors on the filter input core, but it's rare. More than likely, uh, it would be the bridge rectifier uh, um, package uh, or bridge, one of the bridge rectifier diodes. Now, if you see one uh, bridge rec rectifier diode gone, if you see them individually, uh, individually mounted on the board, replace all four because uh, they would have got stressed out with when... Um, with the short. You check out your bridge rectifier. You have your four your four pins there. And you suspect it. All I ever do is I would go across it like this and I'm reading point four eight of a volt. Go the other way. You should read something else. Go across here. Go open. Open we would expect that. Point 0.5 open and then likewise we go across here the outside ones we should only get one way so let me see is that positive there with my red lead because I'm reading open there in that direction so let's have a look at our package see can we see mm. yeah i'm sure it is very hard to see but i think it i think it is that's the positive we can confirm that anyway when we get to the capacitor okay the purpose of the bridge rectifier is to convert this ac that's coming in here which is a reversing current and this line goes positive and then it goes negative positive negative and same with this and that would mean the current will be flowing this way and then that way back and forth and electronics can't work with that type of supply so what it does is it converts it to a DC and what you get here on the output is at, uh, of the um, bridge rectifier is 385 volts DC roughly about that and um, it can be more can be less but it's 385 volts and you would say, why is it 385 volts DC when all you put in is 220? That there is 220 volts AC or MS. So it's, you've got a, a waveform that goes up. Let me see, I get another piece of paper. You got that, and say this is it's not an accurate drone, but it'll give you the idea. Your RMS value would be an average along there, and the same here. It takes an average, it can't read that peak on your meter, so it takes an average reading. But what happens is these peaks will appear on the output of the DC. Uh, the, the DC uh, the output of the bridge rectifier and what will happen is you will get something like that and this here would be zero volts down here zero volts now this is pulse DC now at the moment but TV can't work on that either but I'll get to that now in a minute now, if you put your meter on that, you're not going to even read. Um, you're going to, you possibly will read about um, um, 220 volts DC, roughly about it. But things have changed now because you've got this extra pulse in there. So your 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 meter reads RMS values, and it's calculated and calibrated for um, reading it as an AC waveform. And the DC one is um, is not really um, designed to measure uh, pulses. So I don't know what type of voltage you're going to get. It will read a voltage, but uh, it won't read these peaks. 
a scope will you will put on an oscilloscope and you will see them on the on the um um on the sc screen of the scope um uh, but you can't use the scope uh connected directly to the hot side because uh the ground plug uh the ground lead is is uh, connected to earth on your household mains and it's going to trip the lcb um, at best at worst it'll blow your uh, your power supply so don't do that you, if you have to do that, use an isolation transformer connected to the mains input to isolate it from the household mains. So, right, as I said, um, we will get these DC pulses on uh, on the output of the uh, bridge rectifier. We can't have that. So what they've done is they put a capacitor there. That's minus and that's plus. It's AC and AC. So to put a capacitor across it, to smooth out those pulses. So what now you get is instead of that, you would get, if you look very closely on it, you, you get something like that. And down here is zero volts. And that'd be roughly around 385 volts. So we got a, a, a rough um, um, DC voltage with no spikes on it, or, uh, this here would get rid of any um, spikes that would be on the mains and arc and that can, with people switching off lights, which create uh, spikes, which can blow the power supply. We have this 385 volts DC. Uh, we now have our AC converted to DC. It's what we need now to do is lower that voltage. That voltage has to be lowered to work with lower voltage um, ICs and circuits on the, uh, the board itself. And they normally use transformers and they're normally uh, uh, switch mode this is called a switch mode power supply uh, other people call it a chopper power supply and um, i've often heard people um, refer to them as inverter boards but inverter boards you normally see on led uh, light circuits and they normally go up and uh, voltage goes up not down but uh, anyway it doesn't matter it's only a name Normally, to get a power, one of these chopper power supplies, let's, let's follow the, the voltage. We've got 385 volts comes in here. And we're going to start with a thing called a standby power supply. There's always, most, there's always some kind of a, um, um, a standby power supply on an LCD uh, that keeps your microprocessor, your, your computer end of your TV, up working. It would always have a, a supply going to it. And the reason for that is it has to turn on the rest of the power supply. The rest of the power supply is dead until the computer tells it to switch on. And you see here we got PS on. That tells it to switch on. But we're jumping the gun a bit there, but I'm just trying to explain why we have this standby power supply and a main power supply. 385 comes in here into this uh, transformer and it goes across this um, primary side and comes out here on Q2 on the collector. I've, ju I've just shown a transistor. Uh, it could be an FET and most of the time nowadays it is an FET. And then the other that, that, that end of that uh, transistor is connected to uh, the hot ground. I've just used different symbols there for hot ground than say cold ground. I put uh, just a line for cold ground. And what happens is we get this voltage going across there onto that, but it, it's not doing that. And we just got 385 volts there now at the moment. This IC here, IC2, has to, has to get a supply voltage from somewhere. Its normal power uh, supply comes from a winding, a secondary winding on the hot side of the power supply to a diode and a smoothing capacitor. It has its own smoothing capacitor. And it has to go back to this chip. You see it here, follow it there, it goes into the chip. Uh, now this chip is just a generic chip. What you'd have to do for your power supply that you're working on, you'd have to get the uh, schematic that you have, find out what pin it goes to, or get the data sheet for it, and because there would be other components connected to this. This is just the bare basic essentials that I'm showing. There would be um, over voltage, over current protection, 
and there'll be a lot of capacitors and resistors for uh, uh, the timing of the uh, of the pulse with my modulated signal so the power supply is not up running so no voltage is going to appear here at the on this diode so what a lot of them have done is to put in say um 10 meg resistors we just use 10 meg because i've seen 10 meg 10 meg resistors and they will become the, re, referred to as startup resistors and what that does that 385 volts will drop across each one of those resistors and it will become low enough for this it would just give a value of say 10 volts i've seen 10 volts i've seen 12 volts there and when you plug in the unit that 10 volts immediately appears there and what you get then out of uh, ic2 is uh, a pulse this pulse with modulate and um it switches this transistor on and off on and off on and off on and off so what is happening there is every time that transistor is switched on current will flow through this primary side of the um, of the transformer through the transistor and down to hot ground then when it switches off that current uh, uh, stops and this uh, inductor uh, sorry the windings of the primary side uh, have uh, a lot of energy in it and now that energy will be transferred to the secondary side which will be here and there which you would get a pulse on the secondary side and you'll also get a pulse on the uh, the secondary side on the hot side and that then would now would take over as the supply for that chip these here are no longer used what can happen with a set that's left in um um plugged in all the time and you all of a sudden you have to do decorate and you plug it out and you plug it back in and it doesn't start up what can happen the, one of these resistors can go up in circuit and the tv would work fine until you switch it off or you could have a problem with this capacitor here when it goes cold this could be low in value it could have got hot um, it's just uh, pulsing too much and the voltage here is too just too low and um, so it's always good check uh, check to check that capacitor there's always some kind of capacitor around the uh, the uh, the uh, ic so we got this uh, secondary side then it's got your pulse out which has been induced in the, the, the uh, transformer onto the secondary side from the primary side and it appears at this diode here and it comes out here current will only flow that way through the diode it won't go that way so you have a dc voltage you'll ac that side and you'll have dc on this side and then that like the um, bridge rectifier circuit and this main smoothing capacitor um, on the primary side will smooth out any ripples and you've often seen these uh, t things on um, on YouTube, and I've done a fair few myself, uh, where um, you'd see the bulging capacitors. If I actually got the scope and put it on the supply lines, you would see you would see pulses. You wouldn't see um, you wouldn't see DC. You would see DC pulses at a high frequency. Now they won't look like the mains input, nice smooth. Um, uh, sine wave that don't work like that because uh, it's switch on switch off and they're, they're more like sp uh, spikes at a certain frequency and uh, pulse switch so we have our always five volts and that always five volts comes down here down to a computer a computer somewhere microprocessor um, in your um on your main p uh, on your main pcp signal board it always is it, this is always this is separate i should really put a, put a line around that because that's on another bed, that board it's not on the actual uh, the uh, power supply board the computer would have uh it's always 12 or always five volts now i've often seen i just got back up here to the uh the always uh, five volts or standby power supply i've often seen this at 12 volts and then a regulator a three legged uh, regulator or a five pin regulator and uh, bringing that down to five volts or even three volts depending on what the, the microprocessor works there's an awful lot of microprocessors out there working at 1.8 volts and 1.6 volts 
So it does depend on what um, uh, your particular TV has. So our standby power supply is up working and our microprocessor sitting there and it's got its clock. It normally has an extra uh, crystal there coming in. It has data lines uh, and it also has a reset line. I've just shown a basic reset which is a capacitor and there will be a resistor, say a resistor there going up to the 5 volts line. And what happens is that uh, when that is discharged and you turn on first, your 5 volts will appear there. But you would have zero volts there because that is charging. That would be like a short circuit for a brief period of time. So your your line would rise. Now it's only a, a millisecond or so depending on the value of the capacitor and the resistor determines how quick that capacitor will charge. Uh, but that is a basic form of, of reset that uh, early computers use. and. Uh, and there's an awful lot more once you don't see any anymore doing side chips and so we just keep this one here as a reset. A micro, all computers need a reset when, the, uh, when they're switched on. And the reason for that is because your supplies don't instantly go up say to 5 volts. There's a period when it's lower and the computer can get a bit mixed up. So it holds off doing anything until that 5 volts is established. When that's established then the reset line goes up uh, goes up to five volts. Now it knows it's uh, ready to take uh, instructions and commands. <coughs> so you come along then, and you have your remote, or you press the standby button on the front of the unit. We get a signal coming out here, PS on. Now let me see, can we find PS on on the uh, on the board? And you normally you'd see writing. On this, I can see power on off. It doesn't say PS on, but it's the same thing. And it's on this side here. It's the first one here, and it's it is actually this pin here comes into that board. And we could follow that as well. But let's uh, leave that for a minute. So this is your PS on coming into the board or power power on off as it says there and it comes to this this is an optocoupler and all that does is um, we got this barrier it can't be connected le uh, electrically so they have light and what happens is when that goes high um, a diode um, lights up and on this side then you've got a light sensitive diode that picks up that light and it changes the state here going to this main IC one. So when that changes state then it will switch that on. But now let's go to the main power supply. And the main power supply would be very similar in description to the, the standby, only for it's a bigger transformer and it's more secondary windings, it can have a lot more than this. And what we have here is our 385 volts DC comes in here in through the primary side of the transformer comes down on this uh, transistor MOSFET whatever you want the core and then on the, we have a gr the transistor then is grounded. We also then have at the start up this IC that drives this transistor. So we have our diode on the secondary side of the um, main transformer and like that it's got a capacitor there uh, to smooth out the pulses and we have our startup resistors here and they will be high values as well and you could have a problem with uh, one of them going and this um, chopper IC will not uh, start running or this capacitor could go low in value as well and that could cause it not to run there is other things in uh, modern power supplies which i'm not going to go into there is a um, power factor correction you might see that as well before you even get to this uh, transformer so um, 
it would make it very complicated. So we're going to start with this. We just start with this uh, basic setup. So what happens now is uh, we start this up and on the base of this transistor, we would have a pulse width modulated signal coming out of this. It pulses this on and off. And because a, a television, um, the load on a television varies, it has to change the output voltage because the more current is drawn on the secondary side, the more these voltages on the second time to, secondary side are going to drop. So something has got to be, uh, some way it has to be used to get the feedback and so this knows what the voltages on the secondary side are like. So what it has normally, on normally the higher voltage line has a feedback. So it probably goes through with the, a network of resistors and uh, diodes and uh, even transistors. comes over here to this optocoupler and the optocoupler here is the same as this and appears here and you have a DC voltage coming back here onto one of the pins of the main chopper IC. And so it can give a, 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 a more a pulse width or less pulse width depending on the output voltage. If the voltage come high, uh, get higher, this transistor's uh, switched on for less time. If they go low, it switches on higher. So it keeps a, a, a fairly regular voltage on the output. Uh, it, it also has, it would have overcurrent protection as well. Um, there might be another line there as well, another up the coupler that would be a feedback as well for over overcurrent. So if you, if you have something shorted and it's drawing too much current, it will shut this down as well. And what we have then, this power supply starts up, it pulses here. You get a large uh, pulse here. Uh, when this is, when this is, um, when this is on, you get zero volts here. When it switches off, that voltage goes higher than 385 volts. It's like a big spike. I've never measured it before. Uh, it's it's over a thousand volts as far as I remember, and uh, it's a spike and it can be it can, it can kill your oscilloscope. But so be careful what you put on that uh, collector of the transistor. I would rather measure here and see what kind of voltage I have here, and. Um, Say when it's in the standby, put your meter on there and make sure you have 385 volts. Um, that'd be standard pr pr uh, practice. So that high voltage uh, spikes are appeared in here. And it, what it happens is it induces uh, um, that voltage into these secondary windings here and these secondary windings on the uh, hot side. And you would have them spikes appeared on here depend on the winding you know different size windings give you different uh, uh, voltage levels and this voltage here this diode here you see is connected this uh, direction this will only give you this would give you a minus voltage i just put down minus 12 volts because that's what i normally see and now we got this winding here we got a second winding and that is connected in the standard way and that is saying plus 15 it could it just as easily be plus 24 which you would normally see on lcd that power up uh, the backlight uh, inverter board and i put this here 100 volts and um, i never see 100 volts on lcd and um, but i've seen 100 volts and more on plasma plasmas need higher voltages and uh, you have to watch yourself when you're working on the secondary side of plasmas up around the, the, the uh, X and Z boards because they're high voltages and you can get a shock off them. But in general, though, on, a, on, a, on an LCD, um, unless you start going on the secondary side of the inverter boards, uh, you don't get a, a shock off the uh, secondary side of an LCD. Uh, like you, you're not going to get from the, the signal board. But we, did, we didn't follow our way all through the... Um, the board and uh, we got as far as the bridge rectifier for start explaining the the operation of it so next thing in line then is the smoothing capacitor and it's going to be a big smoothing capacitor it's got to be rated at more than 385 volts dc and if you look on this board there's two capacitors sometimes uh, traditionally the old power supplies used to have one big capacitor but now you normally you see them in lcd they have two and they're normally sideways like that to save space. And these store a considerable charge. 
so you can burn your fingers across them if you touch the pins on the uh, on the other side of the PCB. What I normally do is I just have an electric light bulb, let's say a lamp, and uh, I uh, put two test I make up two test prods on the live and neutral. And then what I do is I just on the far side of the board I put them on the the, the positive and the negative side of that. And what happens is that light bulb will light up and it will discharge those capacitors without any spark and you could put you could put a, 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 a pliers across it and be short but the sparks can damage semiconductors so you're better off to discharge it uh, to a lamp so the next thing then we have uh, our transformers we have a small transformer and a large transformer and if you look here we even we, we have an extra one in the an extra two in this but that's uh, uh, for the uh, backlights so we're not going to look at them for a minute if you look we have a small transformer right there and it's going across the line one side is on the cold side the other side is on the hot and then we have a larger transformer one side is on the hot sorry let me see one side is hot no one side this side here is on the hot this is on the cold and that would be your standby because it's small and uh, let's see can we find our standby uh, supply on this we have just these two connectors that go out to the main board so let's have a look see can we see our always five volts or see what they're called on this it might be different it might be five volts standby it's a STB 5.3 volts, so it's a 5.3 volts and one, two, three. So on this, then it's um, third pin from the right bottom on this particular one. So our next thing in the uh, equation then would be our chopper transistors, and I would have a guess. There's one big large one here. And that looks like a, a big chopper transistor for the main um, let me see is it no that's more than likely for could be for a power factor correction it could be to do with this inverter board as well because we got that fella here the drive stem so we got fellas here and we got another fella here don't know if you're getting it one second we got some here mounted on there and we also need for the mounted on there so let's see can we follow them that's a big transformer and let's do a continuity check so the middle pin i know is always you can see that there then is the uh, chopper transistor for the main power supply And the only way I done that was I just done a continuity check between the middle pin of the uh, transistor and one of the wind one of the uh, the middle pin which is there and I done continuity between here and here. It wouldn't matter if you've done it there; it still reads through here as well. So if you get the wrong pin, it says it still reads. You see, if that's the only one it should connect to. Now let's follow the standby 5 volt supply back to its source, see where that comes from. Because uh, I don't have a schematic at this and um, I could be wrong in all my assumptions. Uh, second one in is the standby 5 volts. Follow that in, comes up here to a capacitor, electrolytic capacitor, which you would be right. Come through here, there's a wire link, comes over here. And we've got another capacitor here, another one here, and you'll see here some kind of a MOSFET, surface mounted one, could be a MOSFET, I don't know. And then it comes over here, a three-legged device. I would imagine that is one of those three-legged diodes I'm on about. Um, it's like two diodes in parallel if it's configured rightly. Uh, now if I go out here, yeah. So looking at that, that is also my main power supply. So we don't have a separate standby five uh, power, uh, volt power supply in this. Um, so 
let's do a bit of fault finding it. Uh, on it now. If you come along here and you have this fuse here blown, um, you would have to uh, figure out is it one of these transistor shorted or this capacitor shorted, the bridge rectifier shorter, or any, it could be transformer shorted to ground, anything could happen. Um, I would start here just at my um, fuse, where I see my fuse, I would put my meter across this, my ohms meter across it, and you would get, um, you put it across there, you would get, uh, if there was a short, you'd get the beep, and if there was none, you'd see okay. Now, if your fuse is blowing here and you're getting okay here, now you'd have to reverse the polarity because uh, we're talking about bridge rectifier pack, uh, you could have one of the diodes blown, so you'd have to go both ways to uh, change the polarity of your test leads. No short there. If you have a short there, more than likely it's this bridge rectifier. It could be this uh, filter unit. Uh, I've seen them go short, very rare, more than likely your bridge rectifier. If you come out here then on your bridge rectifier and the easiest place to test the positive and negative of that is if you find these two capacitors over tarnish make sure you discharge them first or you'll blow your meter and just test across them and if not that's just the capacitor charger and here it goes when it charges up it, um, the beep goes um, that capacitor is okay. If, you, if it was faulty, you would get that all the time. Zero volt reading on your meter. If one of these transistors is shorted, it's always good practice to do change the uh, chopper IC as well because sometimes when this if this goes short if that high voltage there will appear here and might make its way down there to that uh, chip and blow that as well uh, or probably damage it or weaken it a bit so it's always good practice or any semiconductor you might see tra more transistors here in the base of that there and more than likely if that's shorted there's a good chance they're going to be shorted as well. So I, I would change them um, and find out what they are. Other problems on the primary side is um, the capacitors. These startup capacitors, we got one here. You normally have fairly low value, probably a 4.7 microfarad, 10 microfarad, something like that they are. I've even seen one microfarad in some places. They can go low in value. Uh, and um, what I normally do is get an ESR meter and go across it, spray a bit of freezer on it. You just see what, what happens to ESR. Um, if you heat them up, if you come, come along and uh, use a hairdryer, normally use a hairdryer, um, you can use your hot air gun uh, on a low setting and use that to uh, heat up the capacitors. And if it starts up with a bit of heat, you know you know it's definitely um, uh, capacitor related uh, on, the, on the primary side. These won't show up as bad caps as you traditionally see in YouTube uh, with bulges or anything like that. They'll probably look a bit old, they might look distressed looking, but um, most often the capacitors that go the quickest are the ones that are sitting beside something that, get, that gets hot because the heat dries out the capacitor. So if you see a big heat sink with a big large component on it and an electrolytic capacitor right beside that, uh, it, it could lead to problems. This is just a generic one. Um, it's very easy just to fault find on this, but uh, in reality, the power supplies are an awful lot more complicated than this. Yeah. If we had a short on the secondary side of the power supply, I'm just going to take this. I had this a couple of weeks ago. This diode here was shorted. It was a short in that diode. So that was like a wire link going across that diode. And the symptoms were when I plugged it in, I could hear a ticking noise from the power supply. It was like tick, tick, tick. That's like the power supply tried to start up and it is, it, 
I don't know why it then it just shuts down. Maybe it's over over current protection, over voltage in this actual IC. I, I don't know. I didn't have the data on it. But uh, I came along then. Um, when you hear tick and noise, it's, it's a good chance it's a, a short or a capacitor on the primary side, one of these startup capacitors, gone low in value. Um, I already dismissed them out, uh, out of hand because I, I, I changed them. And uh, I changed them, it eliminated them as a possibility. So um, then, then I went along and started checking here. You say well, it must be easy just to check this, but the way the power supply was designed, it was a computer power supply, it was all steel, there was a steel shield around it, and the in at this particular diode was it's very tight. Uh, I could only get in at it with a very long nose pliers to get at it. This here, if it was shorted, if you had this type of power supply in your TV and this was shorted, you would not have um, a red light or standby light on your on the front of your TV uh, because it takes your mic microprocessor to switch on your standby light. And without that, the microprocessor is dead. If this power supply here was shorted, you would get a light standby light but when you press on press the power on if you were to short here what could happen is um, the microprocessor would find out by a feedback pin somewhere on on the um, uh, say on the inverter boards or somewhere that it's, it's not functioning to be voltage is missing and it would shut down the power supply so you might get a case of um, how uh, you know what's, what, what's wrong why is it shut down how do I test my uh, power supply uh, I normally take out the board and just solder two wires onto the AC connection. Solder two uh, uh, wires on the AC connection. Bring the two wires then back to the, the plug and uh, just plug it on, switch it on. But this is not going to come out of standby on its own. It will not come out of standby on its own. So what you have to do is, is find on your power supply this PSR pin and that is either going to be pulled high to go on or pulled low to go on uh, a lot of the Samsung ones I think you have to pull them high so I would normally just find the 5 volt line over here you'll see the 5 volt line it's the always 5 volt line if it's up and present it should be um, because if you ain't got the 5 volts here it's pointless, pointless troubleshooting here you have to get the standby circuit to work first before you can troubleshoot here. But a lot of power supplies, as, as I see there, just pull that one out, doesn't have a separate uh, standby supply. It's done other ways. Uh, now I don't have tech, uh, technical information on that now to know how it's done. Because there's a lot involved in that board. You've got an inverter board as well uh, built into it. And I, they call that an, uh, an IP board, not, not a power supply. So if you go along here and get a resistor, put it in and put them straight to the um, on all those five volts, plus five volts there, that should drag that high. And that should command your power supply to come on. If it comes on with all your voltages, great. If it comes on and you hear tick, tick, tick like here, Start checking for the shorts on the um, the secondary side, and let's have a look at the secondary side of this particular one. And we have two two diode packs DM eight hundred three DM eight hundred five. I've never seen them give trouble. Now I have seen all these capacitors here give trouble, uh, but that's not the purpose of this. That'll be. You'll see that that would be obvious. Um, so let's see these. One of these diodes is for standby, and then the other one then is for another voltage. Uh, here's a standby, and the middle one then normally goes out. It comes up here and it goes into this three-legged device here. And that would be uh, um, bringing the voltage down to another level. So you'd have this voltage, that voltage, you'd have a 5 volt voltage over here. And plus whatever we have on oh, this thing, whatever this is for, 
Um, you can read power supplies. Sometimes you read the power supplies, you get an awful lot of information from them. Like if you were, as you can see, we have a list of all the pinouts on on this. Um, there's a little dot there that says that's one. So it's one, two, three. So you got to go across like that. Bit of a nuisance. I would rather have a little box there and uh, show on both sides rather than the way they have it done. Sometimes they do it that way. Um, let me see, we have something else here. We got an inverter on off. Here on this don't know we're getting it. Sorry, we're missing on that. As I said, let's get it here. Show it up. Here's the uh, pinouts here on the PCB. And it shows one, two, three, and all the way down. But the way it's actually on here, one, two, three, four, five. And you have to do it that way. One, two, three. So there's our standby power. Yeah, that's your standby power. And pin one is power on off so that's pin one that's the one there i would bring high i try to bring it, bring it high to see what it take it out of standby but you also got an extra plug here and you see markings on here and it shows inverter on off that's for switching on this part of the power supply and this these would generate high voltages you can see these two connectors here they would go out to the back of the screen seven or eight thousand volts probably um touch it put your finger across it and you'll have a nice smell it also shows p pulse width and um, modulate and um, dim so we got another pin there as well it's a pulse width modulated signal and what it does it gives either more on time or less on time so it's a square wave that's um i don't know whether they're talking about the high end of it or the low end of it and um, that's wrote in the uh the program and the design of the chipset um it's irrelevant for what we're doing here you could experiment with it by tur uh, turning up the uh the backlight brightness yeah um, you can do that yourself with the um the remote control on the, on the samsung and put a scope on there and uh, we should be all right this is on the cold side of the power supply you should be able to connect the scope put one on the ground and then the other one uh, probe and, and that particular one you'd look at the square wave and it should change so therefore the more on time something if you see something increase so that means that that particular is on um uh, switching on for more time so whether it's high or low that'll tell you which is which it is high or low power supplies from samsung normally have the part number actually roll on them which is very good handy if you want to order you can samsung normally don't supply parts uh individual parts for their pcbs uh, you uh, you won't get schematics for their uh um the last time i checked any you won't get schematics for their, their video uh, processing board but but they, that that can change you know it depends on uh, uh what they're doing at the time what the companies are doing but here you see bn44 dash zero zero one nine seven eight b one one nine seven b that's the part number for this power supply and you know you could search for a schematic for using that and there is certain amount of schematics for the for some of the the samsung power supply especially on the smaller sets i can't remember ever getting one for this um and also over here then sometimes this board could be put in uh another model another brand uh, not a samsung but they use a lot of samsung stuff and what would happen is you wouldn't see the the samsung number and you wouldn't see the sticker the sticker also gives the bn44 number on if you look at it very closely where bn starts there's a lot of letters before serial number and you see that then it always comes up in the serial number bn44 197 then it ends at the b with the letter so you'd also see it on that sticker but you can see here it's 40 so it's for 40 inch uh right, let's get let's get down so you can see i don't even think you've seen that sticker there's the sticker there with the, the serial it is a serial number but it shows you the bn44 number in there so if that was missing off the, the board which sometimes it is you'll actually find it there on that sticker and if you haven't got uh, any part number no sticker no part number on it you see here you got sip 408d 
that might allow you to search on um, eBay. You might get a replacement if you can't repair this. Likewise, their main signal boards have uh, a BN94. Uh, it normally starts the main signal boards on Samsung. Normally, as a sticker, white sticker, somewhere around the tuner end of it, you'll see it stuck. And it normally starts with BN94. There's other numbers there, ignore them, like BN. You know, there's a you might see the part number for the for the tuner or something like that ignore that the board is bn94 it always starts with bn94 or bn96 anything else we cover um now we have a few diodes in here we just we just give them a check and um, they're easy these ones here you have it there we got 0.4 volt on that and open on that end of it um, they normally say 0.6 of a volt um, you get a 0.6 of a volt drop across um, a silicon uh, transistor junction or diode junction but nowadays uh, a lot of the diodes out there they're getting low and lower voltage drops especially as you'll all see on uh, mobile phones uh, if you go read the diodes and them they're very, the voltage drop across them are very low but they have to be because the voltages in the power supplies are very low. Uh, you couldn't have a half a point six of volt drop across a diode in a in a, a one point two volt uh, circuit. Yeah. There we have more volt uh, diodes out here, larger ones. Point four, drag showing point four, and we have another fuse in here. And um, why we have that? Um, it's something to do with that inverter board, the chopper. Uh, chopper, an uh, inverter board is only another fancy name for the same thing in uh, a switchboard power supply. The only difference is it no normally brings them out to a higher voltage uh, from a DC to uh, AC. I would think most most of the inverter boards I've seen are AC, and uh, they don't have diodes to rectify them. They just go shoot straight out to the. Uh, uh, I could be corrected on that. Uh, there's always a chance someone's made something different somewhere along the line. Uh, the new LED type um, PCBs are a little bit different. They don't use that such high voltage coming out of them as uh, the old uh, CCFL type uh, backlights. Okay, I hope I haven't missed that now and that and I, tr I try to keep it as simple as possible even with this basic generic um, uh, drawing I've done uh, it's still if you try to bring it and match it up to a, a power supply you just put out yourself and um, it doesn't match 100% because there's so many different ways P uh, th th these power supplies are designed um, most of them have everything here the only thing I, I, I you mightn't have is the second uh, the second standby uh, uh, power supply but you can in a lot of sets uh, you might have an extra bit, bit of circuitry in here in big sets uh, power factor correction and then you also might might be an IP board which would have the uh, separate inverter type uh, um, power supply added onto it as well but you normally look at that and it looks well you look at that there well insulated and uh, big fat winding inside and uh, it, it it just looks the job that you don't put your hands near it all right hope that helps you uh, thanks for watching